Hi, in this video, I'm going to show you three main things. The first one is to how to connect to your TV in your classroom through the Action Tech or Wide Eye. The second part is to how to adjust the different displays in your classroom so you can make the best use out of them. And the third one is how to configure your audio settings in your classroom so that your home team and your class team can hear everything going on in your Surface Pro. All right, so let's get started. The first thing you're gonna wanna do is turn on your TV. So we're going to press the power button in your remote. When you turn on your TV, one of the first things that we need to make sure of is that we are in the correct port so that we can connect to our Surface Pro. So ideally, when you turn on your TV, you will see the screen beam screen in your display. However, this may not always be the case. So we need to change to the correct input or source so that we have that screen and we can connect to it. So how do we do that? In our remote control, it may look slightly different depending on the brand of your TV, but you will find the source button or it may say also input in uh, another type of brand. So when you hit that a button, you're going to see the different sources for you to have in your display. It's going to be one of your HDMI sources. So it may be HDMI 1, 2, in some occasions you may even see HDMI 3. What we're going to do is hit on that source so it switches to that different uh, uh, HDMI port. For instance, here uh, I see HDMI 2, I don't have that screen beam screen. So I'm going to click on it so that I have the HDMI 1 port selected. I'm going to wait just about three seconds or so until that input uh, loads in my screen. And I wanna see a screen with the receiver name, something regarding screen beam, um, or anything regarding your action tech. So here it is, I got the correct input. So we're going to wait for it to load. Now the screen that we want to see when we turn on the TV is this one right here. It has our receiver name. So this is a important piece of information that we're going to need when connecting using our Surface Pro. Okay, so now that we're in the correct input, let's go on and see what we need to do in our Surface Pro to connect to the Action Tech. Okay, now, so here I am at my desk and I have my Surface Pro connected to my dock and I see that my screen has duplicated to this additional monitor that I have in my desk. However, I want to use the uh, display, so we need to connect using that action tech. In our Surface Pro, we're going to go and click on this bottom right corner, and we're going to find the tile for connect. Once we click on it, it's going to give us all the devices that we can connect to, and we're going to find the receiver name displayed in our screen B. In this example, we have the room 43 to connect to. So I'm going to click on it, and I'm going to wait to see that my TV is connecting as well. You may see something about verifying security connecting to you now. And then a few seconds later, you will see your display show up in the TV. Now, occasionally you may find that your TV is not connecting to your Surface Pro. So what you can do when this happens is power cycle your action tech. Let's see how we can do this, it's very easy. So we're going to locate the action tech in our room and it's typically by the TV. So we're going to see the power cable. It's going to be the thinner cable in one of the ends of our action tech. And all we need to do is just unplug this cable and then plug it back in. We're going to need to wait a few seconds while the action tech uh, loads up again. And after it loads up, you can attempt to connect again and it should not cause you any problems after this. Now that you've connected to your TV, 
you may have three displays. We got our Surface Pro, we got our additional monitor, and we got the TV in our classroom. Now to make the best use out of our real estate here, we're going to adjust our ways that we display our content in our screens. In this example, I see that my screen one and my screen two is being duplicated. How do I know that? Because anything displayed in this screen, I can also see in my screen two. So it's the exact same content. So when I have two screens, the best thing for me to do is use these as separate monitors so I can move my windows between my two displays and have more area to work on. I'm going to right click in my screen and I will go ahead and select display settings. First step for me is to detect my monitors. I can go ahead and click on this identify for me to know what number my screen is. I got one and two here and here and I got my third display, which is my TV. So what I want to do is extend my view. So I'm going to go up down to the bottom right corner and I'm going to select the projectile. And I'm going to select the extend option. Now I see that I got an additional monitor here in my display settings. So let's see which number each monitor ended up with. I got one, two, and number three over on my display. So what I'm going to do first is arrange my monitors here in my display settings so they match the way they are physically. So I'm going to grab my number three and I'm going to put it on the left hand side of my number one. I'm going to make it so it's nicely leveled here. Once I'm done arranging these, I need to hit apply. So now, if I need to move this window over to my number two monitor, I need to drag it over to the right, and there it is. And if I need to move it to my display up in the top there, I need to just move it to the left. Pretty easy, right? So now what I'm going to do is duplicate my screen number two and my screen number three so that anything I place in this monitor is also viewed in my TV up in the room. So I'm going to go down here and I'm going to find that option. If I don't see that option, duplicating screen two and three, it's because the main display is currently your screen one. You can scroll up, click on screen two, then scroll down, click make this my main display. You're going to see a slight jump here, wait for everything to adjust. And then once you click on this drop down, you will see duplicate desktop two and three. So you're going to click on here and then you're going to select keep changes. And now anything that I have in my screen number two will be also on my screen number three. Another important thing that we need to set up is our audio so that any sound that our computer makes is actually heard on the TV so that our students in class can hear it and also our students at home. So how do we adjust these settings in our computer? What we're going to do first is adjust our audio in our device. So I'm going to locate the little speaker in the bottom right corner of our screen. And I want to make sure it says digital output. If it says speakers, I can go ahead and select the digital output option. And then I may see the receiver name in parentheses. So I'm going to select this one here and I can adjust the volume uh, so that it's not too loud or too low and I can hear that um, it is okay for my classroom. So I can test it out. I'm going to click on this video here and I can see 
um, that my sound is coming out of my speakers. All right. So now when I'm when I'm actually in a Teams call, let's see. Let me go ahead and move this window over here. I'm going to join this call. What I want to make sure is that I adjust the sound for my Teams call also for my digital output. So I'm going to go ahead and click on this more actions. We'll go to device settings. And here I see that my speaker has the Surface Pro speaker selected. So if I were to go and share content, including computer sound, I'm going to get this message saying, hey, you need to change your computer sound settings to speakers. However, that's not what I want to do. I need to change my speaker settings in my Teams call so it is also the digital output. Why is this important? Because if I were to select in my speaker over here, the um, this option here, that will mean that my students here in the class will not be able to hear the video. So I want both teams to listen. I will go ahead and select digital output here, room 43. So now after I select here, my digital, digital output, I can go ahead and click on this include computer sound so that my students at home can listen to the video as well as my students here in class. Now I need to select one of the screens on the left hand side of my sharing tray so that everything I have displayed in that monitor gets shared with my home team. Uh, sometimes I may see the window that has my YouTube video here in the sharing tray under the window title. I discourage you to select this one because if you were to switch to a different window that is not Google Chrome, then your students at home will not be able to see it. So make sure that you select screen one or two, depending on which one you'd like to share, um, so that everything is viewed by your home team. So I'm going to share in this example, screen one. I see that it has that um, red frame. So I'm going to move my window for my Teams call over to my first monitor here so that I can view my students um, at the same time as they're viewing the video. So now I can go ahead and press play here. And now my students at home will be able to hear the video because I included my computer sound as well as my students in class because I made sure that the sound was coming out of the speakers in my classroom. Okay, so that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it and you learn how to make the best use out of your TV and your speakers in your classroom. Thank you.